In today's video, we're using NA10 and lovable.dev to bring startup ideas to life with no code and no hassle. I'll show you how to build your very own app that leverages NA10's AI agents in just a few simple clicks. But first, let's jump into a quick demo to see the end result. So now what we'll do is we'll come through and just enter in our text again, the idea, we'll press this, it should come through, validate the idea, and now it should send it back to us as the user on the front end. As you can see here, it's gonna go through and drip feed it back to the user. So let's start off by building the actual front end of the app, which is gonna be through Lovable itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come through here and put a prompt in. So in this case, what I've said is we're gonna have the use case around a startup idea validator app. We're gonna go through, do concise thoughts back. We're gonna make sure that it's clean, easy to use, modern design, and it's actually got more of a tongue in cheek response that goes back. What we can also do is attach some example. Now I'll include the links below between some of these design sort of inspiration website. There's a couple here, Landsberg. We've also got CSS design awards, as well as this other one called awards.com. And this is quite good just to get some ideas for what you want. So for example, here, this is one for a real estate agent company. We've got one here, which is around sort of the financial side, which might be quite useful. We've got another one here with through Parker. So this again, looks like it's e-commerce brands. Or we've got more of a simplistic one as we've got here with Isabel. So again, a couple of different ones that you could use. If you also come across to Lovable, you'll also see they've got all of the templates here that you can use as well. So it gives you a couple of different ways that you can start off with. The great thing though, is we can come across, for example, to this one here. We'll be able to get rid of this and then we're just gonna screenshot all of this page. So we'll be able to screenshot. And then if we come back across to where we've got our prompt, we can pull it across and input this image. So now what it's gonna do is try and do it in the style. So we can say, please try and map the style of the landing page provided. We can send that off. Now what it's gonna be able to go through and do is build our app from scratch nice and easy so that we'll be able to go through and add all of the different parts that we need. Again, we touched on it a bit earlier. As you can see there, it's starting to go through and do it. But if you're using something like Lovable, it's going to be $20 a month for that starter plan. You can go up as you need it. If you need some authentication or interactions, you need platforms like Superbase on top of this. But if you're just doing something simple like we're running through today, you would also be charged, say, $20 per month, $25 per month. So for around $50, you'd be able to create this app in no matter of time at all and be able to go through and iterate it, refine it and improve it. And you'll be able to see that up here, we've got the super base connection. If you wanted to be able to use that as well and have the ability to publish this website as well, if you want to use it. So whilst this is loading up, we're going to go through and just start building out our NA10 agent. So we can come into here. Now there's two ways of doing this. We're going to run through how to build it from scratch today. Or if you want to jump ahead and just get access to the resources, all you need to do is come across to our community, which I'll include the links below. We'll come into classroom. We'll come across to AI agents. We'll find one that's build anything with lovable.dev. You'll get access to all of the prompts that we use today to generate our output. Actually, the AI agent prompt as well, as well as the blueprint. All you need to do is click on that. You'll get a JSON download. We'll come back into our account. We'll come up to here, three dots, import from file, and then we'll be able to load up our agent here. And as you can see, that's all ready to go straight away, but we're gonna be building this from scratch today. So let's get rid of all of this, and we're gonna go through the first part. So we'll delete the four nodes. We'll just bring this up here. We'll zoom in a little bit. We'll open up here. We're gonna do webhook. We're gonna do webhook. So what this is basically gonna do is be able to receive or send information in this case, we're going to be using a post request because we're having information sent to us as well as us being sending information back to our lovable account. As you can see here, we've now got a production URL. We've got the actual web link that we're going to use as well as come down here. We just need to use the respond to webhook node because we're going to go through and add that as well. So this is going to be the first step. So what we're going to do is copy this. We'll come back into our startup app. So this is actually looking pretty good. It's done it incredibly well. Not exactly like the example we'd had here, but it's gone through and done it incredibly quickly. And it looks like it's got a few parts that bubble up as well. We can also see it on mobile as well. So for example here, that's how quick and easy it is to go through and do it. What we can do is come down to the bottom. We'll add in another prompt. We can say, please, can you send off the information in the idea box from the user to the following webhook when the user presses validate it. So we'll paste our URL in there. Now what it's going to go through is just make a final change. 
So when we click this validate button, it should go through and send all of that information off to our AI agent. So what we'll be able to do is come into here. We'll do listen for test events. This is going to wait for us to send information across from Lovable. We'll just wait for it to come back. So on the left-hand side here, it just goes through and it will tell you that it's making all the changes. And once it's all sorted, it will come back to us and just confirm it. So for example, there it's now gone through and finished it. So what we should be able to do is put our prompt idea in there. It looks like it's quite small. So we'll probably go through and ask it to make this box a bit bigger in a second. We'll be able to say validate. It looks like it's not gone through here. If we come back into here, it's not got the webhook information. So what we'll just do is if we come back, we'll give it a test again. It's because it had the response webhook node. So it's waiting for that final part to come through. So we'll just send through. So what we should be able to do is come back. And there we go. If we come across the schema, we've got all of this information plus the startup idea that's come through. So we were able to receive the information. Now we can go through and leverage the great tool that is NA10 to go through and use AI agents, interact with different systems to be able to get a response back. So we're going to come down. We're going to do advanced AI. We're going to do our AI agent. We're going to need to change this to define below. We'll come across to schema. We're going to scroll down to where we've got our startup idea. We're going to paste that in there. So now if I open this up in expression, what you'll see is it's a great thing about NA10. It's going to show you exactly what that AI agent will receive and how it would go through and be able to execute it. So now it's got the information around the idea that we have. So for example, in this case, we've called it pitch perfect. It's the idea. It's going to automatically generate proposal decks, prospective clients. It's going to be able to include an RFP, all of this sort of stuff. So we've got it nice and easy. What we're going to be able to do is come down. We're going to do system message. So this is where we're going to add in our AI agent prompt. So again, if we come back across to our community, we'll open up this prompt here. And what we'll be able to do is just copy this and paste in our assistant. So as we've got here, we'll just pop this out. So now what it's got the ability to do is respond with all of this information. So it's going to have a TLDR, the high level take. We're also going to have the problem statements, you know, really understanding what it is, where it fits in the market, all of that sort of stuff. We can also say today's date is curly brackets and we'll do dollar sign now. That just gives you the ability to understand how it fits in today's market. What we'll also be able to do is add in our AI agent's brain. So you've got two ways of doing this. If we open this up, we're going to run through the open router version as well as how you can use open AI. But you've got all of these different models that you'll be able to leverage. So if we go through and we were to use OpenAI, you want to come through and do create new credential. You need to add your API key in there. To do that, you come across to Playground OpenAI. You want to do dashboards, API keys, and then create new key. You give it a name, copy that API key, come back into here, and you'd paste it in there, and you'd be all good to go. But what we are going to do today is actually use OpenRouter because then we can leverage all of these LLMs for whichever use case we want. So for example, create new credential, We'll come into Open Router. I love this platform because, as mentioned, you've got access to all of the different LLMs that you would want. We'll come into here. We'll do keys. We'll do create a key. We'll do NA10 lovable agent. We'll give it a limit of 10. We'll do create. So now it's only able to spend up to $10. We'll come back into here, paste our API key. We'll do save and it will go green. And we'll just rename this to our lovable AI agent. There we go. And we'll do save. So now we've got access to all of these different LLMs that we would want to use. So, for example, if I wanted something that would really analyze it in depth, we could use DeepSeek R1. If I wanted a higher level model, we could use DeepSeek V3. So, there we go, we could use that. Or we could use Claude, or we could use OpenAI. So, again, you've got all of these different options. We're going to go through and just use OpenAI 01 Mini just to give this an output nice and quick, nice and easy. So we'll just rename this. There we go. And what you would also be able to do in NA10 is add some memory in here. So it would remember the last couple of messages that came through. We would need to have a unique chat ID if you're going to do that. So maybe that user's ID. And you can add in all the different tools here, such as Airtable, Google Calendar. So if you wanted them to be able to complete an action, you'd be able to do that within this tool as well. So we're just going to come out of there quickly. We're going to come across to plus. We'll do webhook. We're looking for respond to webhook. So now what we'll be able to do is just replace this with our respond to webhook node. And we'll be able to respond with the information that comes through. Again, you can do first and coming item, which should be the response from the actual message. Or you can come down and use text. We're going to go through and just test that in a second. 
So if we now come back into our account, it looks like it's made a few changes in the background, so it should now be using that URL. We can say, please make the pitch box idea capture slightly before the user so they can see of their idea. We'll send that off. So now what it will do is it should make this box slightly bigger. So we'll be able to go through and get the response as we want it. Again, if you wanted to go through and add any icons, you'd be able to do that as well. You can change the color scheme. All you need to do is chat to it in plain English and it'll be able to go through and do that for you automatically. That's also the same as with different pages here. So we've not gone them in here at the moment, but you'd be able to do that if you wanted to, where you can connect it all up. It looks like it's gone through and added this extending box, which is great. That's exactly what we would want. So now we'll be able to go through and do it. It looks like we had an error. So we'll just click on that. We'll say, try to fix. And now what it should be able to do is automatically go through and get the response that we need. There we go. It looks like it's fixed the issue for us. So now we can come and paste our ID in here again. We go. We'll paste it in here. Now what we'll do is come back into our AI agent. We'll do test workflow. We'll come back into here. We'll do validate it. So now what it should do is come off, go through the AI agent exactly like we can see there, which is great and present it back at the bottom here, which is great. So for example, if we look in our AI agent, it looks like the response, we've got the TLDR summary, all of that information that should come across, but it's not outputting it here. So we can say, please show the user the webhook response about their start up idea. We'll send that off. And now what it should do is instead of it coming up here with a random idea is it should come through and it should actually show that webhook result instead. So what we'll do is we'll wait for this to just go through and make the changes. We'll press validate again, and then we should be able to go through and see that response at the bottom here. There we go. It's made that change. So now if we come back in here, we should be able to do save. We'll do test workflow. So now what we'll do is we'll come through and just enter in our text again. The idea we will press this. It should come through, validate the idea, and now it should send it back to us as the user on the front end. So if we come through here, it looks like it's got some of the markdown formatting still included. So we just need to go through and improve that. As you can see here, it's gonna go through and drip feed it back to the user. But if you wanted to, it could go through and dump it back all at the same time. Just depends on what you prefer. As you can see here, it's saying what the high level summary is. You could change what the text looks like. It looks like it's texting it out if you wanted to, which again, has a lot of information there. So if we come back into our response, we'll do JSON. As you can see here, this is everything that would be going back to the user. So that's where you just want to play around with the prompt and how it'd be presented back to the user in your app that would be on lovable.dev. So there we go. It's gone through and provided us the entire result. And that's how quick it easy is to build something with N810 and lovable for a real power app to get that output for a startup or an MVP minimum viable product idea that you have to get it out to market and see if there's any traction around it as well. But how do we get it to work with this constantly in the background without us having to test it each time? Well, what we want to do is come back into our AI agent. We're going to come across the webhook. We're going to do production URL. We'll copy this. We'll save and we'll do activate. We'll do got it. We'll come back into here. So now what we do is this will refresh. We'll say now please send the information to the following webhook as it's the production URL. There we go. So now what it should do is actually send the information off to that agent running in the background because it's active now active versus having to go through and do the test step each time. So it should come back and do it automatically. So there we go. It looks like it's gone through and made the changes. This should just refresh. So we'll give it a second to refresh. So there we go. It's now refreshed. So now if we send this off, what we should be able to do is press validate it. It should go off and trigger our agent automatically and provide the response back. So we'll just check this is all working. So there we go. It's now come back automatically with us not having to do anything. And we know it's executed in our AI agent because if we come across to executions, we can see succeeded. It took seven seconds for that response to come back. And we've got that full response now being drip fed back to our customer. Again, what we could also say is actually we want it just to come back all in one chunk. We would be able to do that as well. So what we can say, so there we go. We could say instead of typing out the webhook response, please just show it immediately after the response comes back. So we can go through and we'll send that off. So now what it should do is it provide that response a little bit quicker. So we'll wait for that to just come back with it's an idea. And then we'll go back and just send this off again, just to see how that impacts the response that comes through. So we'll paste our idea in there. So this is going to be onboardly AI powered onboarding assistant. 
So we'll press validate it. It should go off and trigger automatically. So if we come across to executions, we should see here running for four seconds at the moment. We'll be able to see it once fully executed. So there you go in green. And we can see here that it's now just outputted that straight away versus us having to go through and do it manually or type it out instead. But again, you can play around with it as quick and easy as you like. This has been a really quick demo on how to use Lovable and NA10 to build your very own app incredibly quickly. Stay tuned for more around AI, automation, and AI agents, and have a great day.